welcome to the 19th lecture today we are going to talk about the non abelian gauge symmetry so just to recall uh, what gauge symmetry the electromagnetic gauge symmetry that we have discussed till now which is this lagrangian where d mu phi dagger d mu phi minus m square phi dagger phi this was shown to be invariant under phi goes to some phi prime given by exponential i e alpha of x times phi of x and uh, this is a pure phase that with which a uh, complex scalar field was getting transformed and uh, here d mu phi was defined as del mu plus i e a mu phi of x and uh, under this transformation this a when the phi transforms as such then a must transforms to a mu uh, of x goes to a prime of mu of x that is given by a mu of x plus del mu of alpha x okay so under this transformation this was uh, invariant and what we note that the phase with which the, the scalar field was transforming this is the basically transformation that is acting on the physical field uh, or the, the matter field is also called so phi is a field that we are transforming and it is getting transformed only uh, through a pure phase and this particular pure phase is an element of the group u1 where the u1 is defined as exponential i theta for theta all theta between 0 to 2 pi so this is a group one can confirm that this particular set under the multiplication operation forms a group okay so what one says technical term is uh, that the electromagnetic gauge invariance uh, is a u1 gauge invariance or such a theory is a, is a uh, is called abelian gauge theory because u1 is a abelian group because the two complex number multiplication is uh, something that is commutative so we have a basically a commutative uh, uh, all the operations are commutative so it is called abelian gauge symmetry and uh, say consider now that if phi is is a n component column vector multi component which is n cross 1 column vector and i want to transform phi of x uh, to some phi prime of x through a matrix u of x acting on phi of x so since uh, this is a vector then the u has to be a matrix and the matrix could be the position dependent so let this be a transformation where u is uh, n cross n unitary matrix satisfying u unitary means satisfying u dagger u equal to identity but u of x is dependent upon x in general i can i can uh, have demand for this kind of uh, transformation okay so uh, before we go on to the details uh, of how do we make this particular any Lagrangian of this multi-component scalar field under uh, invariant under this uh, generic uh, matrix transformation, we look at some basic uh, property of the matrix itself using which we will do the transformation. So let's just say uh, just remind ourselves of the uh, abelian case again. So here u uh, is just a phase and u dagger u is identity which is same as u u dagger u is an element of the group u1 okay uh, now if u is an n cross n matrix okay where the then it is an element of this particular group where uh, u is an element of n cross n matrix satisfying u dagger u equal to identity which is equal to uh, u u dagger okay so when we have this uh, group uh, any element of this uh, so, uh, of this group or another way any unitary matrix can be written as exponential of i times h where h is equal to h dagger this is what gives you u dagger is equal to u inverse because if u and u uh, u dagger u is identity that that means u dagger is u inverse so if i write it like this exponential i h then u dagger will be u inverse uh, if and only if h is equal to, h dagger is equal to h and that's obvious to check that if this is u then u dagger can be written in this manner you can do a power series expansion on both uh, side and then take the dagger uh, so not power series expansion of on the right hand side of this ex expression for you take a dagger and then resum it you'll see this is the expression okay. and u inverse is just nothing but uh, uh, the exponent changing sign okay now these two guys will be equal if and only if h dagger is equal to h so in other way uh, the exponentiation of i times h 
I times the Hermitian matrix, which is what you're going to give you a unitary matrix. So this is how we are going to write all the n cross and unitary matrices that we will use to transform a generic field, uh, n component field. Now let's do some counting of variables that we need to describe such a matrix. So an n cross n complex matrix has a n square complex number that gives me two square, two n square real number that many degrees of freedom you can say and u dagger u equal to identity is actually n square con uh, constraint equation so because it's n cross n matrix on the right hand side and also in the left hand side so element wise they have to satisfy this constraint and it happened to be all of those constraints are independent of each other so i have n square independent constraint so that gives me that u uh, is described by this 2n square minus n square that is n square real number okay on top of that one can say that you know the, the determinant of this u matrix okay determinants of any matrix written in the exponential form uh, can be written as exponential of the trace of the edge okay so this we have discussed in the mathematical physics course if the matrix can be written as this then that if you take the determinant over here it's same as the trace of h and you can see that uh, this can be motivated by saying that if uh, u was in diagonal form so would be the h so here the determinant will be product of uh, uh, all the eigenvalues and here uh, the determinant again will be product of all possible eigenvalues written in this form but when you have a product of all the exponentials uh, all the exponentials the exponent get added up so basically what you have is just a trace of h over there uh, if i demand that uh, determinant of u is equal to one that means my trace of h has to be zero so this is very important result that we are going to use now that uh, uh, over here because uh, we will be looking for uh, only those matrices in general uh, well we can look for a, a, any unitary matrix but usually what we will look for is the matrix whose uh, determinant is plus one so determinant of u dagger u uh, is equal to determinant of 1 that is uh, because u dagger u is equal to identity and since determinant of uh, this guy will be determinant of u times determinant of u dagger and since u and u dagger is just a Hermitian conjugate of each other so the determinants will be complex conjugate of each other so it becomes determinant of u mod square equal to 1 okay so that's a determinant of u would be just exponential i phi and which is an element of u so the determinant of u is just a phase and when you choose a phase to zero then you basically get determinant of u equal to one and sun group is, is such a group it's a unity group with additional constraint written over here that determinant of u has to be uh, one so that's one additional constraint so number of free parameter that describes this particular unity matrix which is determinant one is n square minus one real number so we had n, n square real number to describe a general unitary matrix of size n cross n and if you subtract one further then you can make the determinant to be one also so when you write u which is element of sun to the exponential i h where h could be any Hermitian matrix so i can actually write this h as a linear combination of n square minus one independent matrices with different coefficients okay so i can write since there are that many real number to define it so i can choose a basis so ta's are the basis in which h is written in a way h forms a, this is a vector space of all possible hermitian traceless hermitian matrices okay so uh, where is this alphas are, are all the real numbers okay now this this much about the unitary matrices uh, actually unit determinant unitary matrices is what we are going to use and uh, that the element of sun uh, since they are, do not commute in general that gives me this sun or even the un to be the non-abelian group so a global transformation that we already know under this uh, because assuming that this u uh, this unity transformation is uh, not uh, space-time dependent a global transformation so phi of x going to phi prime of x given by u of phi and del mu phi of x going to del mu phi prime of x given by u times del mu phi because the del operator doesn't act on u u is independent of x and under this transformation the lagrangian it would be invariant for both for formulas and uh, the scalars 
Okay, so global transformation uh, under uh, this non-abelian group is no trouble, and then following the method of uh, uh, Noether's, uh, one can neither, uh, find neither theorem and conserve currents. Now, if I make this transformation local, okay, that means my u is dependent upon x, and the del mu phi goes to del mu phi prime, which is now phi prime is written by u x t phi x, so then it becomes two terms here okay and this is a non-invariant this gives me the non-invariance of the del mu because del mu acting on ux is non-zero okay so we need a covariant derivative like earlier and we here we define with a opposite sign over here earlier we defined with a plus i now we are going to stick to this particular and difference between these two is just that you know uh, the convention of charge is different but i'm going to stick to this convention because this is I'm taking from the book Cheng and Li, okay, uh, or the previous one also was taken from Cheng and Li. So for abelian non-abelian, they happen to use two different conventions. This is my favorite convention, by the way. So here, if I just use U of X to be a general matrix, uh, then what what we need for the coin derivative to have is d mu phi going to d mu phi whole prime. That is U of X d mu phi. Is what the relationship I want in other word this particular thing is written over here okay so this is a, a d mu phi whole prime means the phi is primed and the d mu is also primed because the a is a prime on it and on the right hand side it is u times d mu phi okay so when I expand this over here so this particular thing when I expand so if d mu acts on u that gives me this d mu acts on phi that gives me this and uh, a, this particular term is sitting over here so left hand side I have three terms on the right hand side I have u times del mu phi so this term very nicely cancels on the both side okay and then what I have leftover terms I'm going to write with this particular term I'll keep as it is here is ie times a mu prime ta okay and uh, so that was the definition of my covariant derivative here a mu times ta is there and because this whatever Hermitian matrix that sits here also have can be expanded in terms of uh, the TA matrices so that is what uh, being used over here in the definition and here we are carrying on to so mu a TA will sit here and then u of x and then phi of x sitting here so phi of x I wrote in different color because basically I'm saying this is operator level identity so I can get rid of the phi of x and this particular term here goes to the right hand side with the minus sign again phi of x phi of x written so it when I remove phi of x from this equation, then I get an equation for a mu a prime t a. This a is summed over. Okay, this particular thing is related to this part a mu a t a over here and then this derivative over here. So let's just go step by step. So here I have u of x standing around on the right hand side. So first I get rid of the phi's and multiply this on from the right hand side by u inverse, and then take care of this minus i e putting it to the right hand side so my a prime mu a uh, uh, a prime of a mu a t a is given by u a mu a t a which was written over here since I'm multiplying from the right hand side by u inverse to get rid of this u I get this u inverse over here and then when I was dividing this ie I get this factor over here del mu u u of x and then u inverse is multiplied from the left hand side sorry right hand side so this is my transformation property now the, since u of x is this exponential now when all the theta a's are very very small then I can write this particular exponential as a as just uh, up to linear term in theta okay uh, so okay so here I'm using the phrase theta okay so here I was using alpha to be real number but here I'm using the name of the variable I change so u, u is a function of x because this theta is a function of x because t's are the constant this is a basis vector a basis matrices so to say so I do this a, a infinitesimal uh, theta case I do the expansion u, u inverse or u dagger would be like this and then del mu of u would just be the minus del mu theta of x t okay and del mu uh, del mu of u times u inverse will be just the same as del mu u because u inverse up to order theta second order in theta i'm not right okay and then u uh, a 
u inverse can be written up to this order here, over here so we have to be careful about writing the matrices so this is what setting with both side multiplying by identity gives me the first term okay and here first term multiplying with the uh, this ta uh, left hand side with the ta will give me minus theta b tb uh, because b is a term index summed over so i can change it so here i change it to tb ta uh, so sorry mua ta this particular term which was to begin with okay and uh, then the second piece will come when the identity from the left hand side and uh, ta dependent term from the right hand side will come over here that will be plus i mua ta tb uh, times theta b and uh, so it's the ta's and tb's that do not commute but the a's uh, the amu field and the theta b which is the parameter they are just uh, theta b of x is this real number and amu of x is, is a real field and plus order theta square which is not written so here it can be written uh, just by uh, observing over here that this is nothing but a commutator and of course the real numbers i took it outside and the matrices I have written inside whose commutator is needed. Now, uh, since this we are talking about these groups, they happen to be Lie group and the generators, which is this uh, the basis vector for the exponent, uh, they satisfy a nice commutation relation. My apology. Okay. And a normalization that trace of TATV is equal to half delta ib this two are, will be used so i can replace this uh, determine uh, i can replace this commutator with i times fabc so this expression will be, be uh, achieved and then what i do over here is that uh, i move this c and this fabc is a completely anti-symmetric uh, tensor okay and when i do some couple of renamings over here Okay, so basically what I do over here is that A and C are exchanged. So the sign changes and becomes A, C, B, A. Okay. And uh, after this, A and C's are renamed, not exchanged this time, mind it. So what is the meaning of exchange means that the C was the uh, dummy index for TC and A is the dummy index for A mu A. Okay. So only the position of the indices exchange on the, on the, the indices on the field and the matrix remain the same. So this is just the exchange. But here they are pairwise renamed. So wherever was C become A, and wherever was A was renamed to C. It's just the renaming from here to here. So that I can take out TA common. So what I get A prime mu A is given by A mu A plus this FABC theta B A mu C minus, okay, minus I have this, this particular guy, but this minus I is also sitting over there, okay. When I put all these things, so I get minus i del mu theta a. Okay. One over e is coming there. I could have made this theta. You see, theta uh, for the case of u one, I took the this coupling also outside from theta. One can could have chosen this convention, but I am I am choosing ex exact same convention that is in the Cheng and Lee's book, so that you can follow it from there as well. Okay. And uh, the ideally, uh, one should choose is such that all the uh, gauge dependent stuff sorry all the uh, property of the field which is getting transformed is sitting inside the exponent so I could have put G over there itself so that here the the gauge field actually should be independent but actually it is uh, not it will turns out okay so we'll just keep it like this and mu then it transforms in in this particular manner okay and uh, this is taking the infinitesimal form actual full transformation of mu is given by this box equation okay with all the use uh, use uh, used the full uh, expression for you no approximation now for the field strength tensor we can can define uh, in the same way as a commutator but just to make our life simpler we define this mu with a blackboard font to be mu a ta okay that means uh, and here also the d mu which is defined as uh, del mu plus i g and here again i change the notation i wrote it g so i g is blackboard a mu so this is the notation and i have d mu d mu minus d mu d mu acting on phi is equal to minus i g f mu nu phi 
why this minus is because i am defining this del uh, del uh, this covariant derivative with a minus g over here that's why wherever g appears it will change sign compared to what we had in the oh, sorry what we had in the u1 case the notation we have used here slightly different notation in there so this is the definition of uh, the field strength tensor so field strength tensor will be defined as the matrix over here uh, given by the uh, uh, this blackboard font f menu which is nothing but f menu a ta okay it's the same it's uh, contracted with ta's now d mu d mu acting on phi one can do the analysis so four terms one two three four terms would be there because the d mu has two terms and the ig times del mu acting on a nu phi can be using the Leibniz rule for the product uh, der uh, derivative of the product I can write two terms like this likewise d nu d mu uh, inverted will be like this now here I have cancelled the terms with a different line stroke so single straight line with straight line these two cancel each other the squiggly line cancels with the squiggly line over here after doing this Leibniz rule and this zigzag cancels with this zigzag after doing the Leibniz over here so I had to begin with one, two, three, four, five terms in one and five terms in another, and pairwise three pairs cancels out. So six terms cancel, and this two in pink and two in white that survive. So two in pink is uh, this. I took the i g common over here because minus i g common because it's sitting anywhere there, and on the left hand side also there. So it has to cancel. So minus i g f mu nu uh, blackboard uh, font times phi is given by uh, minus i g. And this del mu a nu minus del mu a mu very similar to what we had earlier but a mu's are matrices over here okay remember this notation and then ig time minus ig times the commutator of these matrices is a mu a nu minus a nu a mu acting on phi so i say from here i read that it, it is true for any phi so f mu nu is just nothing but this expression in the bracket okay and when i take uh, right in terms of matrices so it is del mu a mu a ta minus del nu uh, a mu a t a and here when i put this commutator then we got g times f a b c t a a mu b and a nu c where this order very really matters so uh, b and c will be like mu and mu because this f mu nu is come totally anti-symmetric okay and uh, now i can take all the t is common that was the reason why i use this kind of uh, dummy notations and it is f mu nu a eighth component of f mu nu uh, becomes del mu a minus del nu a, so del mu a nu a del nu a mu a plus this g times f a b c a mu b a nu c okay so this extra piece comes only because of the non abelian nature of the symmetry transformation now we can ask how does this f mu nu itself transform right in the case of u1 it was invariant but let's just say how uh, check whether uh, this is invariant here or not and uh, before jumping to that let me just remind you of how a mu transforms so a mu transforms like the first term is this u and u inverse on the two sides and, and usually whenever you have this kind of transformation u on the left and u, uh, u inverse on the right usually it will be called that it transforms like a vector uh, in the internal space so internal space is labeled by the a index so uh, the 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 uh, vector space is spanned by this uh, ta being the basis this mu a is a vector in that basis so I, it is uh, mu a is a dual vector in a sense it is a lorange vector in the mu index and it is a uh, another vector in the a space the internal space of this uh, uh, because the Lie algebra is, is a, also a vector space so in that particular vector space is a vector the A's are various components okay so that's I just wanted to remind so uh, okay so the transformation of mu since it's a vector that vector part of transformation would be there but this is the non tensorial transformation that makes the gauge field non-trivial it's, it's not a tensorial transformation okay. uh, when, even when you return in the uh, infinitesimal form the first two term is just how a vector would transform and this is a non-vectorial transformation also to say non-tensorial transformation okay so 
we got the field strength tensor written like this. Now, if I look for the transformation of field strength tensor, so we first uh, remember ourselves, remind ourselves that d mu acting on phi uh, was nothing but u times d mu acting on phi. So the transformation of this, okay? Where phi, when the phi is given is transforming as u phi, then this d mu phi is transforming to u times d mu phi. So how does d mu of d mu of phi would transform? And that will be like assume that d mu phi is is playing the role of phi over here. So it's just u times d mu d mu phi, okay? Because here d mu phi also transforms u times d mu phi. So it is just a copy of the first equation where the phi is replaced by d mu phi, okay? And use the exact same transformation. So that basically gives me that d mu d mu minus d mu d mu phi transforms to u times d mu d mu d mu d mu phi, okay? So up to this numerical factors of i g, it is f mu nu prime with a matrix acting on u phi because there is a prime over here. So both are primed object on the left hand side is nothing but u times f mu nu phi. That gives me f mu nu prime is u f mu nu u inverse over here. So this is how it transforms and this transforms purely as a vector. Okay. So whenever I have something that transforming as a vector, there, there is always an inner product uh, defined over there that will give me an object which is invariant. Okay. So again, if I use here the inf infinitesimal form of u, then what you see that f mu nu it will transform as just f a plus this term over here. This is another way to write the vectorial transformation. Okay. So given this uh, and the fact that I was mentioning that if f mu nu is a vector, then there has to be some notion of vector inner product and that vector inner product for the matrices is nothing but the trace. So trace of f mu nu, f mu nu matrix can be written as now transforms as u, u inverse f mu nu, u, u inverse f mu nu. So the u, u inverse in between I did not write, they got cancelled. But because the trace has a cyclic property, this u I can take to the right hand side and this, this will also disappear. So it is nothing but trace of f mu nu, f mu nu. So in a way, the trace of f mu f mu, which is the inner product of two vectors, is invariant under gauge transformation. So choosing this uh, gauge transformation, uh, the non-abelian gauge transformation, the most general gauge invariant Lagrangian can be written for a scalar and the fermion is that uh, minus 1 by 4 f mu a f mu a. Okay, this is written in the component form. And so this, since trace of f mu f mu is given by half of f mu a f mu a i can write this particular term as minus half of trace of f mu matrix f mu matrix okay so this is just the kinetic part of the gauge here it's a psi bar d mu gamma mu psi times m psi bar psi and then the field will be written as d mu phi tiger d mu phi for the scalar field minus m square phi tiger phi so this is how we will write the most general uh, gauge invariant Lagrangian. This is the gauge kinetic piece. And this will also include what called self-interaction of the gauge bosons. Here, this will give me the interaction between gauge boson and a fermion. And this will give me the interaction between gauge boson and a scalar. The details of those uh, interaction and, uh, uh, and expanding all these different terms will be done in the next lecture. Here, we will stop here that using the concept of non-abelian symmetry, we can write uh, a gauge invariant Lagrangian involving formula in the scalar. And this, if, you, if, if I might say, is dictated by the gauge invariance only, except for the mass term, which is there because it is permitted by the gauge invariance, it's not dictated, okay? So if I just drop the mass terms, then the, these three terms, uh, so let me just remark those three terms, this term, this term and this terms these are dictated by the gauge uh, gauge symmetry okay and i will have more to say about what do i mean by something dictated by gauge symmetry in uh, in in another one so we stop over here and we will meet uh, next in next lecture where i'll write down the non abelian lagrangians the, some details of this and how do we write the final rules for that.